Welcome. Today we're going to talk about research tips. These tips will help you when you're doing personal research or academic research. Let's go ahead and get started looking at our tips. We're going to cover 10 research tips today. Our first tip, tip number one, know what is expected of you. If you're doing research for a school project, be sure to know what is expected of you. Before you start any kind of research project, you should talk to your instructor, your faculty, and ask them what's expected of your research. Should you be finding books, journal articles, websites? Are you allowed to use things like Wikipedia? These are all things that you should be talking to your instructor about before you do your research. Let's move on to tip number two. Tip number two is know what research tool to use. If you're looking for books, you'll want to use a library catalog. If you're looking for journal articles, you'll want to use library databases. When you're in a library, they have different kinds of research tools for different reasons. Most libraries have a library catalog for searching books, journal titles, videos, and other kinds of material. Then they also have journal article databases. Those search inside the journals. You're going to want to check with your library to see what's the right tool to use to find what you need. Again, whether you're looking for books in a library catalog or journal articles in journal article databases. There are two separate tools to find those items. Let's move on to tip number three. Know what you're searching for and know your keywords. Before you start searching in a library catalog or a journal article database, know your topic. What are keywords that describe it and what are some synonyms? Before you start doing any kind of searching, you want to have a good grasp on your topic. That involves when you're searching the library catalog, a journal article database, or on the internet. You really need to know what your topic is so you don't get off track. So again, be sure to have a good grasp of your topic before you go into searching. Let's move on to tip number four. Tip number four is using and, or, and not. These are called Boolean operators and they can enhance your searches. Or can expand your search and provides for synonyms. And will limit your searches. And not keeps out words that you don't want in your search results. For example, if I'm using Boolean searching to enhance my search and I'm searching farming, I might use the, the Boolean operator OR and putting farming or agriculture or farming or horticulture. I can use that OR to put two synonyms together so I can broaden my search. If I want to narrow my search, for example, and I want to just search for organic farming, I can use the AND and I can put organic and farming and it will find those two words together, organic and farming. So again, you're using those Boolean operators, and, or, and not, to broaden or narrow your search. The last Boolean operator is not. And that's when you're doing your searching and a word keeps coming up that you don't want. So for example, if I'm searching for farming again, and I keep getting gardens and gardening up, I can do a search that says farming, not gardening. And that will eliminate the word that I don't want from my search. So again, using those Boolean operators, and, or, and not, can broaden or narrow your search. Let's move on to tip number five. Tip number five is use quotes. When you're searching a phrase in a library catalog or in a journal article database, put quotes around the phrase you're searching. Using quotes can be used in any kind of online search tool, in a library catalog, journal article database, and on internet searches. So if I have words that I want to search and they're next to each other, like organic farming, I can put quotes around it. And it'll just find organic farming for me. If I'm searching for hydraulic fracturing, and I know those two words are going to be next to each other all the time, I can put quotes around it. If I'm searching for something like landscape architecture, again, I can put quotes around it. And I can do that in any kind of online search tool, library catalogs, journal article databases, and when I'm on the internet. Remember, 
use quotes when you have words that are next to each other. That will help narrow your search. Let's move on and see what number six is. Tip number six is truncating. Truncating words allows you to search for multiple forms of a word from one search. Example truncation symbols include question marks and asterisks. Let's continue on with our example of farming. I'm searching for farming and I want to I want to broaden my search for farming. I can take the word farm, which is the root word of farming. I can put a truncation symbol on it and my search will find all forms of that word. So it'll find farm, farms, farmers, farming, it'll find all forms of that word. So again, you want to take a word, take the root of the word, put your truncation symbol on it, and it'll find all forms of that word. Another example could be I'm searching for forestry. So I could take the word forest, which is the root word, put my truncation symbol on it, and it'll find forest, forests, foresters, and forestry. Find all forms of that word. So truncation is a great way to expand your search. And you can do truncations in library catalogs, journal article databases, and on the internet. Let's move on and see what tip number seven is. Tip number seven is to use the advanced search. Whether you're searching a library catalog or a journal article database or the internet, be sure to look for an advanced search option. The advanced search option allows you to customize and limit your search based on your research needs. As you're doing your research, you may find that you need to put some limits on your search. And again, when you're in the catalog, a library catalog, a journal article database, or on the internet, look for an option for advanced search. That should give you a list of options, such as limiting by date range, limiting by the kind of material that you're looking for. And for example, when you're on the internet, you can limit to things like when the page was last put up on the internet. Uh, if you're just looking for information from the last year that was posted on the internet. Again, uh, on the internet, under advanced search, you can use your limit by domain name. So if I'm doing research for nonprofit organizations, I might limit my searches to just .org websites. So be sure to always check out the advanced search option with whatever search tool you're using. That's always going to be there. It might be a little hidden, but be sure to look for that option. You'll get a lot more ways to limit your search. Let's move on and see what number seven, uh, number eight is. Tip number eight, citations. As you're doing research and you find items that you want to use, be sure to record the citation information. When you're doing the, your research, that's the time to record your citation information. Now when I say citation information, I mean everything that you would need to either use that item as a footnote use that item in your bibliography, use that item whenever you're referencing it in a research paper. So as you're doing your research and you find, for example, a book, you're going to want to record the author, the title, the publisher, the place of publication, and the year. If I found a journal article and I need to record that citation, I need to rec record the authors, the journal article, the journal title, and any volumes and issues and pages and the year. That enables a person to go back and find that particular item that I was looking for. And the time to do that is when you're doing your research. When you find that book or that journal article, you want to write down what it is you found. Also, you might want to check with your instructor to find out if there's a particular bibliographic style that you should be following. There's a number of citation styles out there. For example, MLA, APA, Chicago. And so before you get into doing citations, check with your instructor and ask them if they have a style that you should be following. Let's move on to tip number nine. Tip number nine is interlibrary loan. When you can't find a book or journal article at the library you use, be sure to ask about interlibrary loan. Interlibrary loan is this great system where libraries share items. So if I'm at a library and I can't find the book or journal article or even a video that I'm looking for, I can go to my library circulation reference desk and I can ask about interlibrary loan. I tell them what it is I'd like. I may have to fill out a form or fill out a form online. And then the library does all the work to find that item for me. 
libraries around the world share so if i want a particular item someone sends it here for me and in turn my library may be sending things out for others it's always a good idea to inquire about interlibrary loan and it's always a good idea to plan ahead interlibrary loan can take some time if you're looking for a book or a video it has to go through the mail system so you're looking at a good week to two weeks journal articles nowadays are emailed to you but you can't always plan on that sometimes they're still mailed so if you're going to use interlibrary loan plan ahead and again it's always good to plan ahead when you're doing your research you don't want to wait till the last minute but again we can always find what you're looking for if there's something that you need come up to your reference or circulation desk at your library and ask about interlibrary loan it's a great service our last tip today is to know when to ask for help if you need help getting started with your research or need help during your research process process be sure to ask a librarian for help no matter what library you're in whether it's a public library a school library or an academic library there's always going to be somebody there to help you if you don't know where to start with your research or you've hit a wall and you don't know where to go from there stop by your main library desk and say I need help I don't know where to start or I need help continuing on from where I am so remember there's always people there to help you and that's the big tip here ask for help that's why we're here to sum up, we've covered 10 research tips today. I think the biggest research tips are to uh, know what your keywords are before you get started so you don't get off track, and to also um, know how to choose the right tool. Know when to choose a library catalog and know when to choose journal article databases. And if you're not sure what tool you should be using or which journal article database to pick, again, ask for help. We've covered a lot here today, and I hope you've learned something. So thanks for joining me today to cover these research tips, and I'll see you next time.